The Duelist Cup is just about coming to a close here, and we went on another 17 win and only 3 loss run um, using, of course, Labyrinth. I've already covered the Snake Eye matchup with Labyrinth in another video, but if you want more deep dives into that, kind of like what I did with Floanderese during the tier limit format, let me know, you know, high level matches or, or something like that. But I'm going to show you how Labyrinth plays into a couple of other decks, and there are some interesting mechanics that you can learn um, in order to kind of edge out wins where you think that it might seem really difficult to do so. So let's go ahead and jump into those matches now. So Labyrinth continues to be an absolute force, I think. Um, definitely one of the most fun decks to play, in my opinion, and also just very good into the meta. The only thing it kind of struggles a little bit against is Branded. Um, but, and, you know, unless Branded really gets, like, a decent hand or the nuts, like, you actually have some play there. In this matchup, we're going second against a combo-heavy Synchro deck. And thankfully, we do have Nibiru, um, because, again, with Labyrinth, you can't afford to play a number of hand traps. Uh, but they do end up getting their Junk Speeder out and triggering the, I think that's Stardust Synchron, yeah, to grab one of the spells. But we're going to go ahead and debut the entire field, so before the opponent can start synchroing, um, give them a huge token. But it's not over. They're going to be able to extend here, sending Stardust Trail. Um, I think that's what it was, right? Yeah, Stardust Trail. And then being able to summon it back out to go into Excel Synchron to re-get a level 2. Um, or level one they end up going for the level one with the token that's made off of the stardust trail into celestial double star now this is a tuner and they could have made a baron here um, but again it's their turn one so it's kind of like what are they really aiming for um they end up activating this effect because i guess they wanted to go into the negate of herald so this makes it a little bit awkward for me um now, during my turn, I'm going to have to just beat over that Herald before I can do anything else. So I just go straight Battle Phase. And the Excel Synchron is not doing anything that's threatening to me right now. Unfortunately, the opponent was holding an, um, an Ash Blossom, so that negates our Ariana. But that's fine, because we have a Dimensional Barrier and a Daruma Cannon, both of which just like shut down Synchro, like anything Synchro-related. So the opponent's going to be able to continue to combo here. Um, yeah, they're going to just do some extensions with the Assault Synchron and to bring back the Excel Synchro. And, you know, once I see them kind of flood the board there, I'm just going to go ahead and activate the Daruma Cannon. Um, again, our hand isn't necessarily the most uh, playable. We draw Lady, which isn't the worst, but, like, I have to activate the dimension, Dimensional Barrier in order to trigger the Lady. So probably don't want to do that. We end up Tribute Summoning for Lovely there, and then we're going to be able to activate Lovely, which will trigger Lady. And again, this is why I love Labyrinth. Yeah, Maxi, sure, becomes an upstar goblin. I just don't gain the life. You draw one, I get my lady on field. I reset the Daruma Cannon off of the Lovely here. Now, you are going to get to draw off of this card. So, you know, it got really good utility to, to grab a Synchron monster and get the effect to draw off of this. But I guess that's fine. Um, they have a Synchro 6, and I'm not afraid of anything that's Synchro 6. So I'm just like, let the, let the opponent continue to cook. They're going to Foolish Burial here and Chain Droplet to negate my monsters and again droplet is like non-targeting i believe so i believe they can negate like the late the lady here so i'm going to chain the daruma cannon now and i'm going to chain the um lady so i can set my trap uh and the opponent has nothing in hand and no other way to extend nothing in graveyard to extend they've out you know they have nothing left in hand obviously we just flip these cards back face down and there's like nothing the opponent can do unless they pitch something with the foolish there and I guess there's nothing they can do, so they just end up scooping it up. All right, in this matchup here, our opening hand is all right, since we do have a furniture card that we can start our plays off with. The opponent chains max C, and I'm like, okay, well, I can chain Lady to that so that you don't end up drawing one. Um, but they end up DD crowing my Welcome Labyrinth Trap card. And I'm like, okay, well, that's a little unfortunate, but, you know, it's it's fine, I guess. So all we got is set two and a lady on field and pass. And this is, again, another reason why I like Labyrinth, because I do have Snake Eyes built on two accounts. And just because I had too many gems, I had to buy the pack anyways. Uh, otherwise, my gems would expire. Um, playing Snake Eyes is, you know, it's a very powerful deck, but man, does it take forever. And you look how fast these turns are with Labyrinth, right? Uh, the opponent starts off with a birth, and I'm going to... Go ahead and activate Maxi. The opponent normal summons a Scare Claw. So if they want to do any kind of extension play, I don't, I don't care if I draw off Maxi, right? But like if they want to do any extension plays, like you're playing into Maxi. So they just summon this and pass. They're going to Maxi um, against me when I activate my big welcome. So this will give them a draw one. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use Ice Dragon Prison here. Um, and the reason I do this is because them chaining Maxi to my big welcome prevents me from setting a trap. So I activate Ice Dragon Prison to special summon now. 
which will prevent the draw one off of the Ice Dragon Prison special summoning, but allow me to chain my lady to my Ice Dragon Prison to set a card, which I set Dogmatica Punishment. So in this build, I'm using some extra deck monsters because I think I like have an Entis on this account. Yeah, so um, this is fine. Uh, we are probably gonna go for lady here and I probably pop the card in hand. Um, oh no, maybe the birth. Hmm, because they draw off max C. Normally I would want to pop a card in hand here, I think, because I think I can deal with this birth um, outside of, um, yeah, pop a card in hand. Like I can deal with it like this turn. So the clearly, clearly they drew unicorn for turn, right? Um, yeah, they had what triple max C in the opening hand, and this is why I love labyrinth guys. Just like with flow under ease, like in labyrinth is so much more resilient. But like max C, I don't care. Like sure, max C, that's fine. <laughs> Draw one if any, really, right? And like again, you don't even have to. So here you see me send the. Um, fossil warrior thing that will allow me to banish it and pop the birth and I outed the opponent's zero attack um, Scarecrow Cash Tira and you can see here the opponent just ends up quitting again because yeah Labyrinth just uh, yeah too strong I'm telling you guys if you enjoyed my Flawanderese gameplay I think you're gonna really like Labyrinth it was between this deck and Vanquish Soul and you know being away from the game for five months I wasn't able to build Vanquish Soul when the pack was released so I'm not gonna craft all those ultra rares but Labyrinth, I am really a big fan of. I think this deck is fantastic. It's way more resilient than Flawandries as well. And what you're going to see in this matchup is just some of the unique ways that you can play around a lot of the things that you would think would stop this deck because the fact that you, you use trap cards, it, it's able to play through and around a lot of interruptions that the opponent might put up. So in this instance here, I'm just going to pause it here and just explain what was going on. So our opening hand wasn't the greatest, right? We set a cool clock because we had a hard drawn big welcome and Labyrinth Labyrinth field spell. So we wanted to be able to trigger big welcome, summon the lovely and bounce something back that wasn't the lovely, right? Um, so that's why we set the cool clock. Once the opponent revealed that they're on Sword Soul, thankfully we didn't get ashed because that would have probably made us lose the game there. But the field spell will pop the token here um, after bouncing the cool clock because this means that the opponent has like a, a really hard time doing any kind of extension play. And then the lovely will pop a card in the hand. So we know that they have another Ashuna. Um, they're going to chain droplet pitching a Moye. So they're just revealing their whole hand. And I guess like this, this doesn't actually like, I, I guess this makes sense if you plan to beat over the lovely and you want it off the field, which in this case would be really bad for me because I have no way to like, I have to draw something to make my hand playable again. Um, so I was banking on like this lovely staying on field, but normally this would not be a good play because this costs you two cards and you negate a pop one or pop one on field like pop in hand or pop on field. So like this actually worked out well for the opponent to beat over the lovely here. Um, but normally like I don't see that this is the play. Like you'd rather me just, unless you have something in your hand you really want to protect. That's the other reason why. Um, but I can't imagine you, you care about protecting these two cards. Cause I was going to pop, maybe maybe they did. Cause I was going to pop the monk here um, so that they couldn't do the banish Ashuna special summon. But now I'm forced to use my ash on it, which is fine. Uh, but they still have the monk on field and I'm like, okay, like they can beat over and I still need to draw something in order to be able to get it back into this game. They make an odd play here and I'm like, why are they linking? Uh, you know, you can, like if they ended up discarding a Taya off the Forbidden Droplet and then they, they uh, shaman back the Taya to banish and, and, you know, proceed to play, that would make sense. Um, but this is why they did it. So again, they have reasons for everything. I guess they really did want to protect the potential pop of the normal monster or the pop of Protos in hand. So the Protos here, you would think, oh, Quantum, all your welcome labyrinth, big welcome labyrinth. You know, you can't special summon any dark monsters you're done for, right? Um, well, again, because you play trap cards and depending on what trap cards you play, um, <clears throat> I personally like to play Compulse and, and stuff like that for like situations like this and or, and or like monsters from the extra deck that are a problem. Uh, we draw a Welcome Labyrinth and I'm like, okay, this works. Because if you read Protoss, it does say that the uh, the effect to not special summon monsters of that attribute, which obviously the opponent is calling dark, is only until the end of my turn, like the next turn. So they activate it on their turn, the end of my turn, the effect is gone. So in their draw and standby phase, before they have the uh, the chance to activate Protoss again, <clears throat> I'm going to activate my Welcome Labyrinth. Now again, I know Protoss is indestructible, so I don't bother activating Labyrinth Labyrinth, but I go for Ariana here on the special summon so that I can grab a furniture card. And I grab Chandelier specifically so that it doesn't get special summoned to field, it comes back to hand. Um, because it, it might be a, a turn or two before I can out this Protoss. We're going to activate the Ku Clock and then chain the Labyrinth Chandelier, pitching the transaction rollback. 
and this will allow me to set and activate a big welcome labyrinth here which gives me my normal summon for next turn in the ariana we get back labyrinth cool clock uh, to hand because again no point in special summoning it because it would just get popped and we do want to bounce the, the, the ariana we don't want it to get popped by the protos i just activate the the labyrinth labyrinth effect to pop the protos just because i've used two labyrinth cards but yeah normally you wouldn't do that because obviously protos can't be destroyed by card effects uh but that's going to trigger the chandelier and the lovely here and you know we know they have the ashuna in hand the card they drew for turn was emergent so if we think this through this was a really clutch play in the draw phase to pop this because if i pop the ashuna they emergence for taya taya banish mo Ye. they can't go for game if they go for chi sao i think they have 5300 points of damage they can't go for berserker because if you activate protoss before you synchro summon you can't summon berserker if you activate protoss after you summon berserker you pop your own berserker um, so they can't go for game from, from what I know. There's no other real Synchro 8 that's not a dark monster that would allow them to go for game. The smart play would go would be going for Baxia or just Chi Sao and, and searching the follow-up. Um, but yeah, I mean, they would use their Emergence, get the tie, a normal summon tie. They would have nothing in hand. Taya would dump. You can't do anything with the dump. Off Chi Sao, you would search maybe for like a Blackout so you could set it and then pop two cards. That, that probably wins them the game. Um... Or you, yeah, you can target Protoss, uh, Protoss, obviously, and pop Protoss, and it doesn't get destroyed by the blackout and pop two cards on my field. So if if I didn't pop that Emergence there with the lovely hand pop, I might have lost this game. Again, it would depend on my draw, because they wouldn't necessarily attack me for game, but then searching blackout on the heads-up play would be the smart thing to do. Um, they're just going to protect and use the effect to pop lovely again, but now I have my normal summon for turn. So you can see how that one draw of Welcome Labyrinth and using the knowledge of like the draw and standby phase is where I can like start to get my engine online really helped. Protoss only negates the special summoned, or sorry, not negates, but prevents the special summon monsters of uh, Dark. So I can still normal summon the Ariana, and I search for yet another furniture piece. We're going to pitch furniture and set up a big welcome again, doing the same cycle of, um, you know, activating in the draw phase and standby, or standby before the opponent can activate the Protoss in the main phase. And then we drew a Compulse, uh, and this card can easily just bounce this back to hand. They don't have enough attributes to resummon it, and I can probably end up popping it in hand um, but it does depend on what they draw for turn. So again, during draw phase, I'm actually going to go for Lady here. Um, this will allow me to trigger off a set trap when I activate Compulse. Because we bounce back the Ariana, we're going to be able to trigger a bunch of effects. So Stovy Torby hits the field, Chandelier comes back to hand, and the Welcome Labyrinth will get reset. Now I'm going to go ahead and activate Cool Clock and then activate Compulse on the Protoss, Protoss, however, I don't think I'm flipping between the names, but it doesn't matter. Um, activate uh, Lady there to set a trap, which I plan to activate this turn in the Ice Dragon's Prison, which is very strong because I can grab Moye and banish whatever worm they put on field if that's what they drew for turn. And because we outed a card with the Evac, we're able to special summon the Lovely from Grave once again. The opponent draws a Sword Soul um, a, a Summit, sorry, I think that's Summit, right? Sacred Summit, yeah. And we opt not to steal off the Ice Dragon's Prison. Um, they reveal the Ashuna that we know they had in hand off the Moye. And I make a misplay here. I, sh I needed to wait until after the token was summoned because you actually want to pop the token. Uh, popping the Moye here is actually worse. Uh, so I pay the price for it. But it, it ends up not mattering at all. Um, because the opponent couldn't do anything to play around it anyway. I could have popped the token here, but I end up popping the card in hand, which again is of no consequence because the Ashuna ends up just banishing itself anyways. Um, the only difference is they don't get to special summon and go into a Link 1, which doesn't matter. Um, they're going to go ahead and bring out the Vishuda, and they still don't have enough attributes because they'd only have the Moye and the Vishuda to summon the Protoss. So, because they have to banish the Ashuna. They have no more Shaman, probably. Not that it would really matter because you have nothing to special summon anyways. You already use the effect of Moye. Um, and you can't link anyways because you have the token. And, the to you know, when you have the token on board, you can only Synchro Summon. They don't have a Synchro 11, okay? Um, nothing to really do with, with Protoss in the hand, so they just pass on this. If they go into the Link 1, use Vishuda to spin back, like, what? Field Spell, Trap Card... I activate trap card in response. They can't target the ladies. Um, they target this. I chain it. Uh, they can target target Lovely, I guess. But Lovely's already got its utility off this turn. And then I can pitch it with furniture, resummon it with uh, the transaction rollback that's in grave for the big welcomes because I've gone through two big welcomes already. Uh, so during the end phase, we're going to trigger off the Stovey Torby, set Welcome Labyrinth, and now it's just GG from this point. We're going to special summon out the Ku Clock off the effect of the furniture going down there. Not that it matters. We actually should have brought this to hand, but it's fine. 
activate lovely effect, set a big welcome, and then uh, link off lovely and one of the ladies into a muckcracker, pitching the dead um, gamma there in order to resummon lovely. Activate transaction rollback so that we just, I just was trying to free up space on the field here. Uh, bring out the uh, lady again. So, you know, the two materials used for the link are just kind of resummoned. Trigger off all the effects now since we copied the big welcome off of the transaction roll rollback. We're up to chain link four on our effects. Special summon the Torby, get the chandelier back to hand, reset the welcome labyrinth. Then we have another one set here. Um, and then lady to pop a card in the hand, which is the Protoss. Protos, whatever. Activate Welcome Labyrinth. Chain the lady there in order to set a trap. We're probably going to set Imperm here. Yep, but the game's over this turn anyways. Um, summon Ariana. Ariana effect to draw. We draw into another Ariana. We pop the token off of the field spell with the Welcome Labyrinth. And we're going to synchro the lady and the Stovi Torby into a Chaos Angel, which will banish the uh, Vishuda. So we have just absolutely decimated every single resource on the opponent's field. And look at our board and our hand. So it's just like that Labyrinth snowballs its way through an Arch Nemesis, Protoss, Protoss, whatever. I'm going to call it Protoss. And uh, cleans up Sword Soul quite nicely.